This is what we like to see when we're settling in for a movie. Over two minutes of black screen opening credits. Slow burning light bulb serves as an analogy for the slow burning realization your brain has during this movie, which sadly will be five minutes behind the film's actual reveal. Olivia Williams isn't my girlfriend or still living wife in this scene. Apparently there's already a ghost wandering around this house that makes Anna shiver, and that shit is never solved. And that person apparently never goes to see Haley Joel Osment either. Remember, Malcolm isn't dead yet, so who's the mystery ghost making it cold? And don't tell me it's the guy upstairs because he isn't dead yet either. Yep, fire and paper go hand in hand. Excellent mantle decoration choices here. In recognition of his outstanding achievement in the field of child psychology. Exposition via awarded plaque. For countless children and their family. Jesus, you're going to read the whole thing? <clears throat> Married people. Even when you're a disturbed former patient of a renowned psychologist, you enjoy running from one place to the next in the background to scare people. Ah! Unexpected discount Donnie won't- what the f This is 47 Locust Street. Why does Malcolm tell the obvious, possibly crazy intruder who isn't lost what the address is? Movie will now proceed to the next fall, because as we all know, even though he got shot, there is no way Bruce Willis's character is dead. I am 100% certain of this. So, that unimportant shooting requires no further storytelling, because he survived and one day he and his wife will look back on this night and laugh. Also, while this restricts the time jump to inside 365 days, it really does nothing to tell us how much time has passed. Did the shooting take place late September, for example, or in February? Director obsessed with one specific location is obsessed. Psychiatry stalking. Petty theft. The second paragraph of this notebook discusses a conversation in the church that Malcolm and Cole did not have. There wasn't even as much as a star wipe that suggests what we saw in the church wasn't the whole conversation. Malcolm's hand is amazing at building dramatic tension. So a ghost walked in, opened all the drawers and cabinets, then left? How are you supposed to get what you want doing that? Also, that was the quietest opening of drawers and cabinets at that speed in the history of things being opened hastily. Something you're looking for, baby? Also, Cole's mom does not question the fact that she turned away from the kitchen for what amounts to 10 seconds and that this is impossible for her kid to do in the time allotted. Look at my face. And try not to peek down my shirt when I tell you this mom advice. There's no way you're seeing that from this distance. Freak, how'd you like that arm around the shoulder bit? This kid fails to be eaten by raptors in two years. You know, you watch this movie once and you're like, whoa. You watch it a second time and you're like, damn. But if you watch it a third time or more, you end up mostly thinking, well, f Also, Jesus, I didn't realize how many whammy moments M. Night totally staged in this movie regardless of all logic. Okay, this step forward or backward scene is fantastic because it's shot well and provides a unique way to learn expositional information while seeing character development play out. One sin removed from one of the reasons we all originally loved M. Night. You forgot it in a drawer. I guess Cole doesn't care if his mom hears him or just happens to walk past the living room while he plays this game with an invisible person. What am I thinking now? I don't know what you're thinking now. Hey, that's not the rule of the game. He's not wrong, he's being honest. Although... You're nice, but you can't help me. Isn't that exactly what Malcolm told him he was thinking at the very beginning of this game? That Cole didn't think Malcolm could help him? Happy anniversary. Scene only inserted into this movie in order to trick you. That's bullshit. Swearing in front of children. This is the first time she's ever noticed this super obvious ghost lens flare? Also, ghost lens flare. And it's on all the pictures? Least observant mother ever. Cole's mom is addicted to dogs. So Cole's writing normal journal stuff, then suddenly, someone starts writing crazy all over it. Now, maybe a ghost did that. Maybe Cole is writing what the ghost says. Maybe Cole's possessed. But then after all the crazy talk, Cole continues writing like nothing happened. In fact, he wrote because I before the crazy part and then wrote it again after the crazy part like nothing happened. So what the f happened there? Because you'd seem kind of down lately. Is it your dead husband? It's probably your dead husband. I mean, it's amazing how many conversations about himself Malcolm overhears where no one mentions him by name. Guy who's in love with Anna turns toward the house and practically looks like a stalker, so that we'll all know he's a guy who's in love with Anna. Keep moving, cheese dick. Cheese dick. They used to hang people here. Kid who is extremely self-aware and knows not to draw violent pictures anymore and wants to keep this seeing dead people thing a secret decides, yeah, this is the kind of answer my teacher wants. Shut up, you freak! Fired. Looks like an ordinary penny. Since we know Malcolm is actually dead this whole time, how does this penny work? If someone were to walk in, would they see a floating penny? Or is it also dead? Anna apparently started watching this wedding video, then left it on while she took a shower, so that Malcolm could walk in and enjoy it, not to mention the audience. Over the entire year Malcolm's been dead, has there ever been a time where he sat down on the couch and Anna came in and sat down on the exact spot where he was sitting? I don't know how you justify that in your head, but surely it's happened once or twice. I know he's a little kid, but damn, you're at a stranger's house, and you saw a balloon. In addition to being a scared, scarred boy who sees dead people, you're just gonna go wandering willy-nilly around this house? Open this door, I'll break through it and grab you! Where did these assholes come from? Wasn't Cole at the base of the stairs when this scene started? Hell, Cole looks like he's in a completely different part of the house than these two are when they start climbing the stairs. And I don't see Cole's I'm a lonely boy at a birthday party paper plate and matching pillow anywhere either. Oh yeah, my dad made me invite him. He did? We know that Cole is unpopular to say the least, and this scene illustrates early on that Cole's mom doesn't fit in with this kid's wealthy parents. So how did this dad even know or care to invite Cole? 
There is no way these parents heard Cole's screams from down here with kids yelling and loud music playing. This is the movie where M. Night Shyamalan decided it would be a good idea to put M. Night Shyamalan in his movies. There's some cuts and bruises on your son that are concerning me. Man. You know, if we existed back in 1999, this insert of Bruce Willis saying, oh man, like the disconnected dead dude he is, would have set off all the alarms. Why doesn't the mom ever ask Malcolm what's going on with her kid? Is he dead? This family doesn't look like they can afford a child psychologist, so yeah, he's probably dead. But back in 1999, we were like, when are we going to get to the icy dead people part? We have to add some twists and stuff. Like what kind of twists? Give me an example. Maybe they run out of gas. Maybe find out Malcolm's been dead this whole time. We have to add some twists and stuff. Also, after writing this line of dialogue, M. Night was so impressed with it, he had it cross-stitched and framed, and it still hangs above his mantle to this day. Maybe they run out of gas. That's not a twist. That's a horror cliche. I see dead people. There's virtually no way this movie would get made today. It takes 50 minutes for Cole to share his secret, and we haven't even seen any real ghost stuff. Yet the movie is pretty damn compelling to keep your attention to the halfway point without a whole lot happening. So we'll take us in off. Suffering from visual hallucinations. Look, I know Malcolm is dead, but why would he pick the streets of Philadelphia to record his thoughts on Cole? This seems like a breach of confidentiality, even though he's dead, but he doesn't know that. Hi, this is Lynn Sear, Cole's mom. Wait a minute, this family's name is the Sears? Like, Sears? Like, sees dead people? Whether or not he knows it, M. Night inspired the entire Paranormal Activity franchise with this sequence of shots. Mama? Is this not the exact same ghost that's been opening all the cabinets and drawers before? How does Cole mistake this obvious ghost for his mom? Man, Cole really has a lot of contraband in this tent. Piracy. Yeah, but isn't Cole used to this by now? He even mentioned the hanging people when Stuttering Stanley told him he was a freak earlier. So why is this a big deal anymore? For him. Yeah, the audience is finally seeing this stuff for the first time, but he isn't. When they get mad, it gets cold. Movie uses bullshit made up reason to explain why Cole's breath isn't visible during scenes with Malcolm. Man, this movie uses a lot of fade to blacks. If Cole. Cole throws a goddamn shoe at the television and only gets a playful chiding. I mean, I've been praying, but I must not be praying right. This is certainly the problem. Hey, come on. I'll show you where my dad keeps his gun. Why are all the other ghosts in this movie introducing themselves in this creepy manner, in the very situation they were in when they died? Malcolm showed up to Cole as a child psychologist and is in no way reliving the moments of his death in front of him. You, uh, <clears throat> got anything a little plainer? <laughs> what a f***ing idiot. I told you what I want. Did Malcolm watch them from outside the store somehow and smash the window? Or did he see Anna and the stalker about to kiss, run out, smash the window, and leave? Because from Malcolm's perspective, wouldn't he be wondering why his wife is kissing another man right in front of him? And if he's outside the store, how did he see it in the first place? Do you understand? Malcolm breaks up with Cole because his wife almost kissed a guy. Because it's impossible to treat one boy and be a good husband, apparently. So Malcolm finally learns the truth about the kid who turned into Donnie Wahlberg. But it's actually kind of amazing that this award-winning psychologist didn't remember to check his tapes after this session, where Vincent was fine when he left him and not fine when he came back. What do you think these ghosts want when they talk to you? Does Cole know that Malcolm is dead? I guess he does, but since he never does anything these other ghosts do, it makes me wonder if he really knows. And, and he never once lets on, even after Malcolm accepts the fact that Cole can see dead people. What if they don't want help? Man, Haley Joel Osment is so good in this movie, I'd take a sit off if I hadn't seen Pay It Forward the following year. What if they're just angry and they just want to hurt somebody? I don't think that's the way it works. Oh, well, okay. If you have a feeling, then by all means. Someone hurting you, I'll, I'll kick your ass. Mom has helpful sleep-talking nightmare to help the son understand how much she loves him. Okay, so the clothespins are unsnapping from his tent, and ah, pre-OC Misha Barton! And I'm wondering how she fit through the slit in the tent and went unnoticed by Cole, who can see dead people. Also, luckily for Cole, he was just told that he needed to ask what the dead people wanted, and this girl just happens to have an easy mystery to solve that will immediately take her to the afterlife. Ghost puking. Although, I will say this is still Misha Barton's best work to date. She came a long way to visit me, didn't she? My question is, why does your mom just let you go on Scooby-Doo adventures by herself and fill a freaking Delphia? Uninvited wake guests can just storm into the wake with no questions, because morning, I guess? I mean, I've been sad at every wake I've ever attended, emotional even, but I would definitely notice absolute strangers who shouldn't know my dead daughter, damn it. Jesus, don't they have an arrangement? Why is this little girl being a ghost dick right now? Damn, dude, didn't you just see this chick last night? Her mouth was full of vomit then. This is not nearly as scary as that was. It's for you. She wanted to tell you something. Ask no questions about how I, a nine-year-old, know about this. Nothing to see here. Kira decided to be kind and rewind it. Holy sh he decided to watch this home movie some strange boy said was from his dead daughter in front of all the wake guests? Luckily for this mystery's ultimate answer, this mom totally doesn't see what is probably a bulky 1999 VHS camcorder with a blinking red light that manages to perfectly capture her mom pouring pine cleaner into her soup. Sammy's mom called. Who turned off the camera? Is Kira coming back? Not anymore. Jesus, another fade to black? Now I'm wide awake. Why didn't we see the signs in this guy's unbreakable movie recipe way back when they were happening? Who, uh, who were you talking to? 
Yeah, so he was able to help Kira out by solving her murder. So how the hell can he help anybody else who doesn't have a Murder, She Wrote episode in their lives? Does he give them therapy? A pat on the back? A hug? I got an idea how you can talk to your wife. Wait till she's asleep. Then she'll listen to you and she won't even know it. You've been helping ghosts all of like three days or something. How the f*** do you know that will work? In fact, I know it won't work, but whatever. Let's get on to the surprise twist ending. Why is the traffic on the other side of the road stopped too? The wreck happened in the left lane, and many of these cars are past the wreck, but for some reason the road is entirely blocked going in the other direction. I'm ready to communicate with you now. What are our opening lines that don't work well with the ladies at the local singles bar for 200, Alex? She died. Where is she? Standing next to my window. Cole expects his mom to believe this without any kind of proof. And damn, flair for the dramatic much? Eh, he's probably busy. He'll be able to help me out later somehow by telling me how he really wishes people would watch out for cyclists more when they're driving. Knowing whose hopes and wishes, even though nothing will ever be done about it, will let me die in peace. She wanted me to tell you. Cole, please she stop. wanted me to tell you she saw you dance. Damn, dude. Couldn't you have led with this? I know you're a kid, but damn. That was a lot of bullshit preamble to get to the part where you proved you can talk to dead people. You thought she didn't come to see you dance. And amazingly held on to this story for years and years before she died, just in case her grandson needed to prove he could talk to dead people. Also, Cole keeps this mother of all definitive proof stories regarding ghosts and his grandmother in his back pocket the entire movie. Because reasons. She said you came to the place where they buried her. Asked her a question. She said the answer is every day. Grandma didn't tell me the question so that it would be more dramatic when you told me what the question was. It's like Ghost Jeopardy. Anna, I miss you. Wow, this shit's actually gonna work? I suppose you could argue Ghost Malcolm has done his part and is ready to accept the truth, but if ghosts only see what they want to see, why is he suddenly seeing this shit? Also, good thing she's holding on to that wedding ring and dropped it right now, or else this talking to her while she's asleep thing definitely wouldn't have worked. I see people. They don't know they're dead. But what a reveal it is, right? It wasn't anything that hadn't been done before, but the way it's done is great. It still gives me chills to this day how good it is. In fact, it's a five sin removal worthy reveal. I think it just went... What did it happen? By the way, Anna decided to stay in the house where her husband was murdered and where the other dude committed suicide. Seems like that would be reason enough to move out, but she decided to constantly remind herself of this horrible tragedy every time she goes to take a shower. Wifey blows out cold breath, even though the movie clearly stated it gets cold only when ghosts get upset and angry. Even though the emotion ghost Malcolm is feeling right now is relief or acceptance. Do you know why you're afraid when you're alone? I do. I do. In West Philadelphia, born and raised on the playground is where I... Your dad gave you that watch as a present just before he went away. This watch was on your daddy's wrist when he was shot down on that Hanoi. Ugh. What? Just found a picture of you. Oh, how do I look? Like shit. Uh, must be an old picture. Listen, you gotta bring me in your hack for a six month overhaul. Negative. ASC. From the king of the world! <laughs> High on a hill was a lonely goat herd lay, hood lay, hood lay. She's in love with a dead guy anyway. But I do my little magic shake and now it's in my right hand. But you wouldn't clap yet because making something disappear isn't enough. You have to bring it back. You know we've got to find a way to bring some love in here today. Tommy. That's uh, a okay thing. Tommy, 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 Tommy. Fast. If... Cole. Who throws a shoe? Honestly. You see, most most blokes are going to be playing at 10. You're on 10 here, all the way up, all the way up, yeah. all the way up. You're on 10 on your guitar. Where can you go from there? Where? I don't know. Nowhere, exactly. Just off the other, there is a ridge. How high a ridge, I could not tell. I want to tell you I love you. I love you too, Daddy. I'll be right here when you get back. <laughs>